over the last few episodes, I've done a series on handling the website payments standard service that PayPal provides. And really, that's just a way to ha complete a checkout process where the client actually goes to PayPal's site to complete a purchase. Where next, I want to show you how to do the website payments pro. And this is where PayPal just acts as a payment gateway and the client just stays on your site the entire time and you communicate with PayPal on the back end through your server directly uh, to complete the purchase. So now since PayPal is going to act as our payment gateway, uh, a lot of this episode can apply to any other payment gateway as well, such as Authorize.net. But let's start off with a few PayPal specific things such as getting this service set up. Uh, once you go to the Website Payments Pro section, just go to Download API Certificate, and you might need to agree to some kind of business license here if you haven't already. But then after that, just Request API Credentials, click that, and this will give you um, an option to choose whether you want to request the API signature or request a certificate. And really, either one of these solutions will work. I'm just going to go with a signature in this case. So we'll just agree and submit. And that will give us some unique information that we can use to uh, communicate with PayPal through the API. Oh, and by the way, I'm doing this all through PayPal's Sandbox uh, solution, which is through the seller account, which I set up in episode 141. Now, of course, when you go into production, you'll want to redo this all with your uh, real PayPal account. Now that we got that out of the way, let's take a look at a very nice Ruby library called Active Merchant. And this is a very nice way to interact with your payment gateway because it supports a myriad of different gateways, including PayPal. Uh, so if we ever do need to change payment gateways in the future, it's easy to do so with a few lines of code. You don't have to change your entire checkout process or anything. So let's get started by installing the Active Merchant gem. Just gem install Active Merchant. Now it's also available as a Rails plugin, but here I want to use the gem because I think it's a good idea to try out Active Merchant outside of your Rails environment. So this way we can test it in a more simplified area and uh, make sure our test transactions work okay and so on. So in this episode, I'm going to just make a simple Ruby file called purchase. RB. So we're not going to work with our Rails project here, but in the next episode I'll show you how to integrate Active Merchant in your Rails application. So in this script here we just want to require uh, Ruby gems and our Active Merchant gem. And next we want to instantiate our payment gateway, which might look something like this, where we grab the Active Merchant's PayPal gateway, uh, instantiate that, and pass a few options to it. This is the information that PayPal gave us when we grabbed our API credentials. Next, to handle purchases through Active Merchant, you need to create a credit card object, and you would just basically input whatever information the user types into your web application. But here, I'm just going to paste in some text in here, just some dummy text to uh, fill us in to create our credit card object with the number and so on. And then we want to check if our credit card is valid. So we could do that with a, an if condition and say, if our credit card is valid, very similar to a Rails model, for example, then we'll just print out credit card is valid. Otherwise, error, credit card is not valid. Um, now this is actually not communicating with our gateway at all here. Uh, Active Merchant just has some validations built in uh, so that it can just do an initial check on your credit card to make sure that it looks valid. So let's try running this application and see if we get any problems so far. And it says error credit card is not valid. So why is it saying that? Why is our credit card not valid? Well, it would be nice if our error message was a little bit more helpful here. So we could say um, credit card dot errors full messages. Very similar to how um, active record works with their own errors. And so that returns an array of error messages. So let's just join them with a, a period and a space. And then if we run this application again, it says you're expired. All right, so that's obviously the problem here. We're not in 2008 anymore. So let me change this to be more uh, dynamic so we don't have that problem anymore. So now when we run it again, a uh, much better credit card is valid now. So now that we got that working with a valid credit card, let's do something a little more interesting and actually complete a purchase here. So let's say um, just gateway 
dot purchase is the method you use in um, Active Merchant if you just want to make a purchase with an authorization and capture. But I'll get into that in a little bit. But anyway, the first argument you pass in here is your funds you want to transfer. So it's not a decimal point value, it's actually the lowest denominator, which is in cents. So in this case, 1,000 pennies is $10. And so the next argument you pass is a credit card. And then finally, we need to pass any additional options we want. In this case, we want to pass an IP address because that is one uh, thing that PayPal Gateway uh, requires you to pass in. So let's just pass in our current home IP address for testing. And this purchase method actually returns a response object, which we can use to check if our response is successful. So we see if it's success. If it is, then we want to print uh, purchase complete. If it's not, then we'll just print our error message and we'll ask the response for the message to print out for that. Now there's one other thing I forgot to get this to work is that uh, Active Merchant will be in production mode by default. So we need to tell it to be in test mode with this line here. And that way um, it'll connect to PayPal's sandbox gateway and not the official production PayPal gateway. All right, so let's try running our script again and see if this works. It'll take a few more seconds longer because it's actually communicating to the real PayPal gateway or, or the sandbox rather. But now it says purchase complete. So it successfully um, completed the transaction on PayPal and did the authorize and capture. And so if we go to our PayPal seller account in the sandbox, there we go. You can see here we have a completed transaction for $10 here, which is our test transaction that we just did. All right, so this is all working using the purchase method on our gateway. And this does actually two different things. It basically authorizes the credit card, uh, make sure that the funds are available there. And then it also transfers the money to the merchants. So it actually does what's called a capture as well. And this is a great way to go if you have digital goods that you want to download, the customer to download, and it's basically delivered to the customer instantly. But what if you have something, a product that you need to ship? In this case, purchase is not a good way to go because that charges the card at the same time when the user completes the checkout process. Instead, we want to um, just authorize that the user has the funds available so we can use this what's called an authorize method and it happens to take the exact same arguments as the purchase method. It only authorizes the funds though that the funds are available and it doesn't really complete the purchase or capture um, the goods and transfer the money over. So at a later time when you actually ship the product you can just call gateway dot uh, capture and then the money value, and then the actual um, authorization code, which you get from the response when you authorized it. So you would just save this code for a later date and then run a capture on it to actually transfer the money over when you ship the product. So if we were to run the script again, it would basically do the same thing because we're doing both an authorization and a capture, which is what that purchase method did. But this case, in this case, is split up, so we could do our capture at a later time if we wanted to, if it was a, a goods that we were shipping. Now there are a couple other methods that Active Merchant provides on the gateway as well. Um, one is called void, which you can use if you already have done the authorization, but you don't want to do the capture yet because uh, maybe you found out the goods won't be available or something. So you can just do gateway.void and then pass it the authorization and that will actually void the authorization. So basically those, um, those funds aren't on hold anymore. Um, or you can also pass in credit. And what credit will do is if uh, it's too late to just do a simple void and the, the funds have already been transferred, credit will actually just, just transfer the necessary funds back that you pass in. And so that's the basics of Active Merchant. Um, what's really cool about it is that the only specific part to PayPal, our PayPal gateway in this case, is just when we're setting up the gateway. Um, all this other code here is abstracted out so you don't have to worry about changing your entire checkout process if you change gateways. All right, that's it for now. And in the next episode, I'll show you how to apply what we've learned here and uh, integrate it into your actual Rails application and make a fully functional checkout process. This episode is sponsored by Pragmatic Screencasts. 
There you will find high quality screencasts on a variety of subjects, including Ruby and Rails. Check them out at pragmatic.tv.